shall we call the Board of Public Works meeting for Wednesday, August the 20th? Order? Yes. <laughs> Since there's no public, I'm going to assume there's no public comment. And for approval, we have the minutes of the July 16th, 2014 Board of Public Works meeting. Any uh, comments or corrections to that? Yes, we had a few. Okay. Move. Any more? Approval. Okay. Second. Any more discussion? Okay. The minutes. Thank you, DJ. Vote. Oh, should we vote? I want to vote. Okay. So <laughs> all in vote. I thought we had an aye there, but okay. All in favor? Aye. aye. All right. Any opposed? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Nothing to take out of order since we don't have any public. So, contract for the regional intermunicipal agreement evaluations to Tata and Howard in the amount of $13,600 from the Water Enterprise Fund. Oh. This is a contract with Tate and Howard. We, um, we were approached earlier this year by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who had some grant money to work with area communities to develop a series of intermunicipal agreements um, on the water system side. So there's a couple of different things um, that are happening. Each community is updating or preparing the water system model and their models will be um, connected to ours to make sure that water can flow in a certain direction and that certain types of physical connections can be made and would work. Um, this particular agreement um, evaluates interconnections between Northampton and, and the sur and surrounding communities, so Williamsburg, Hatfield, East Hampton. Um, and there's also a task, if you read the contract, it was, I apologize for the, it's, it's a little bit confusing, which I'll explain in a minute in a little bit of detail, but there's a task to evaluate an interconnection between East Hampton and South Hampton, and you may wonder why that's in the contract that we're paying for. Um, and the answer to that question is that Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has $9,800 in grant money to allocate to these interconnection evaluations. And rather than give a certain amount of money to each town, they're going to grant the money to Northampton. And then we're sort of distributing it to the other communities through tasks that are being done in this agreement. So it's a little hard to follow, but that's basically the strategy there that we're we're all working with Pioneer Valley on a series of interconnections and there's some grant money that's helping pay for it. Um, so this, this contract is to look at um, the feasibility of interconnections between neighboring towns. So does it cover administrative costs for working with these other towns? It covers the engineering associated with the interconnection evaluations as well. And so the 13600 is the total contract of which 9800 is funded with PVPC grant money, or do we add that on to the thirteen? It is not all, I'd have to do the math. Um, the 9800, well the 98, yes, the answer is yes. It would be $9,800 added. It would, $9,800 to offset the cost of this. To offset the thirteen thousand set. Right. So the net is the difference between the two. It would be. That's right. Yep. Thanks, Mike. That works. Mike was really checking the numbers on this. It's been a brain. It's, it's been tough. It, it's been a little difficult because of the number of communities and trying to do things fairly. But yeah, it's it's a good project. You know, it's something that we've thought about on and off through the years and PVPC. Their help has been useful just to spur the meetings and things. Mm -hmm. I think they were a little bit underappreciating the level of engineering needed to make sure that you know, it was more than just signing an agreement. Initially, they thought it was just, we'll draft an agreement and everybody will sign it. But there's actually engineering that needs to go in to make sure it will work. And will the result of this evaluation talk about connections between the, are we talking about water line connections yep. or are we talking about watershed management? Water line connections for sharing in emergency situations. Any other questions? Yes. Is there an opportunity that might come out of this for us to do a uh, innovations challenge to the state funding program to find a way to 
Do we know the opportunities to take to the next step and actually set up those emergency connections? An innovation challenge. Yes. There's a special fund from the, one of the executive offices that talks about ways communities can be, looks to push communities to work together on regional efforts, and this seems like a perfect candidate. It might be. I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to write that word down. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I applaud that we're talking to our neighbors about this. So thank you. Yeah, I think it's a good job. I think it's a good project. Any other questions? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Change order number three to contract number 23912 for the industrial park interceptor replacement designed to find bell bearing amount of 46200 Dollars to come from the sewer enterprise fund. Move approval. Second. So we have a contract right now with Kleinfelder for the design of this uh, interceptor replacement at the industrial park. And this, um, the original contract with them did not include construction services, so bidding, um, construction administration, um, the tasks that are outlined in this contract, um, we're seeking their assistance with. The project schedule is we are um, we're currently permitting. We have a meeting with Conservation Commission tomorrow night, um, so we're trying to get that permit in order. We'll probably bid the project in the winter time and start it in the spring. What, what does interceptor replacement mean? It means we're building the current interceptor that we have that serves the industrial park is at hydraulic capacity during peak flows. Mm -hmm. So we're building a new one. The new line. A new line. Okay, right. Yep. It just didn't sound like a new line. Okay. What's the total estimated cost of construction? Seven hundred and forty-five thousand. Thank you. Any other questions? I I did take a look at the scope and the price, and it seems reasonable to me. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Change order number one to contract number 1715 for Eastern Avenue drainage improvement projects to JL Raymakers and Sons in the amount of $2,100 from the Stormwater Enterprise Fund. Any second? Uh, so we've got a small change order here with Raymakers on this Eastern Ave drainage improvement project. Um, $1,100, it, the change order is basically two items. $1,100 was for the removal of a, of a large diameter tree that wasn't identified as needing to be removed in the contract plan. Uh, and then there was $1,000 associated with um, making a connection. There was a connection between an existing drain to a, to a new manhole that was required that wasn't called out on the plan originally. Um, so there was connecting a tenant drain to a drain manhole, coring the manhole, installing the pipe and fixtures, brick and mortar to create water tight connections, backfill on the pipe, and, and related work. It's a thousand dollars. So, so would there be any replacement trees planted since you're removing a tree? That's a good question. Um, not as part of this project. We could potentially replace the tree. Um, I hadn't really thought about that. It was in the way. Okay. Um, you might want to, do we want to share this with the tree committee, maybe? It's not a public shade tree. Not a public shade tree. Oh, okay. um, and if it makes sense, we will replace it. I just okay. don't, I hadn't actually asked that question. But, okay. Uh, something we're capable of now. Any other questions? Um, did everybody agree to this? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <coughs> okay. Uh, Change order passes. Change order number seven to contract number 26711 for the Bradford Street pumping station construction to WM Schultz construction in the, uh, um, no amount, time extension only to December 31st, 2014. So we needed a, a, a time extension on this project because we just approved the final pay application on this job. The job has been done for over a year now, and we were withholding retainage because of the landscaping that was done. The landscaping wasn't um, done in a satisfactory manner. 
um, and we were wrestling with Schultz about getting them out here. They're, they're a contractor from New York State. They didn't seem like they were in a big hurry to come out and help us. So we ended up, um, we hired uh, a local company to do some landscape improvements out there and we withheld a portion of their retainage and we're not going to release that. So the application that we just approved for, for payment for them was the last one on the job and it was for only a partial amount of the retainage that we held. And so this will clean up the project. So you re withheld some money, paid another contractor, and um, so this isn't, a, I'm surprised this isn't a negative amount. You're just doing the time extension on this one? Yeah, it's just, a time, it's just a time extension. But that we won't, um, they're not going to get all the money into the, Schultz won't get all the money into the contract because of this. What was the dollar value we were withholding? It was about 10 grand. Wow. I thought that was plenty to get them out there. I mean, you would like to hold enough money to get people's attention. Yeah. But they, weren't, they weren't really interested in it. And is there any implication to them for failing to perform? That we report anyone? Um, you know, I don't think I would necessarily report dissatisfaction with a contractor over a couple of ditches. Okay. To be honest with you. Okay. I didn't want to make it. I mean, the work, the project was a very large project, and they did a nice job with it. Mm -hmm. So I really have no issue with them, other than dead trees and getting them to replant them. <laughs> Seems to be very tree centric. Does it does. Yeah. Did um, the group that took the uh, finished their job for them. Have we had a contract before us for that kind? No, yeah. because it was for a value under the amount that needed your approval. And what was the amount? Do you remember? Was it under ten thousand as well? Yeah, it was. I want to say it was uh, two thousand and change. Oh. We hired C. L. Frank to do the work, okay. and yeah, it's been pretty good. So. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Contract for designer services for improvement to the wastewater treatment plant and several wastewater pump stations to Woodard and Curran in the amount of 55910 from the sewer enterprise fund. Move approval. Second. The, um, this is a public building related project because it involves work at the treatment plant. So we had to go through a project um, qualifications review. First we requested qualifications from engineering firms and then we selected a firm and then um, we requested a price proposal from them. So going back to the RFQ process, we had four submittals. We had uh, Kleinfelder, Wooded and Curran, Wright Pierce, and Pine Bond submit qualifications packages. Um, all were pretty, they, they all met the most uh, basic qualifications to be considered for the project. Um, we had a review team of Ned, myself, Jim Zimmerman, the chief operator of the plant, and Diane Rossini, one of the staff engineers here. And we came to a consensus that Wooded and Kern had the best proposal for the work that was being done out there. So the work um, actually consists of um, three items that we had in, in last year's um, capital budget. Um, one of the projects was a plant-wide intercom system at the treatment plant, mm -hmm. so several buildings, we don't have a working intercom. Mm -hmm. Safety issue that's been out there for quite a while. Um, one of the projects was looking at um, electrical improvements in the control building. We have a lot of water and conduits in coming out of the walls and sockets and everything else in the control building. So it's looking at doing electrical improvements to rectify that situation. And then the Third task in the contract is pump station communication. So we have had a series of recurrent communication problems at different um, pump stations, sewer pump stations across the city. So this would look at providing communication improvements to all the city's pump stations in terms of uh, being able to communicate between the plant and alarm conditions and that sort of thing. What mode of, of communication? What mode? Well, I mean, is it? satellite or phone or? Right now we use leased telephone lines oh, okay. and we were looking at a cellular link as the technology that we would go to. 
Um, Ward and Karn had some ideas about possibly another way of doing it that might be different than the cell link, um, and they want to talk to us about that when the project started. But we were very impressed with the qualifications of people on that project team. They had done a significant amount of communications work and um, both intercom systems and communications, so I think they're going to be good to help us with this. So the fee, we set the fee um, at no more than 15% of the estimated construction cost and their fee at 55,910 came in just under that. So I think everything is in place at the moment to get this work done. Other questions? Well, I, I took a look at, at the level of effort and um, it looks reasonable for the design and it looks light for the construction phase. But I mentioned it to Jim and, and Woodard and Kern feels comfortable that they have enough time in there to, to cover the job. So I think we should go ahead and approve it. But I, I think, if anything, by setting the fee at 15% for the whole job, we we've, we've, might have shortchanged the construction then, but we'll see. I think it's a good, it's a pretty good point. We have had discussions with the procurement officer about what, what percentage is the right percentage on a, on a job. 15%, I think, is, is on the low side. Um, normally, we, normally I would say on a job it might be high, it would be high, it might be higher than that. Um, maybe 20 to 25 percent, depending on exactly the complexity of the work and the amount of construction. Um, I think Mike's right. The hours, I would agree. The hours look a little lean on the construction side. Um, the only thing about this is we definitely don't need full-time inspection on this type of work because it's all something they can come out and take a look at once the work is done or during, during the progress. So I don't think the contractor will need a lot of oversight and hand-holding, although I talked to Mike earlier about it, and he's right in that if the contract, if we don't have an engineer watching over the contractor, some of that responsibility will fall on our staff, treatment plant staff, or the engineering staff. Mm -hmm. So things can start to fall. On a larger project, you might be concerned that things would start to fall apart. This is a fairly straightforward project, not that difficult, um, although it's an expertise we don't, I mean, I'm, I'm no expert in communications, so there's a, there's a little bit of a, you know, something you, you might be concerned about on a larger project. And as we start to do more work at the plant, evaluating that 15% and whether that's realistic or not, um, we need to think about. And I don't want to go on forever about this because, you know, people want to leave by six, but um, <laughs> I do want to Joe, we're going to have a longer discussion about this in the future, I can guarantee you. But um, part of it, about the 15%, um, Joe's Cook's theory is that try 15%. If you don't get qualified firms, then maybe you want to bump it up and see if you can get qualified firms. Now, we're going through an evaluation of proposals on the low lift pump station generator. We, had, we got uh, qualification submittals on that about a week ago. And I had four submittals from four small firms I've never worked with. So the firms that we do work with and we're more familiar with didn't submit. And I haven't done any um, debrief with some of those firms to find out why, but my guess would be that the fee has a lot to do with it. Mm. So it sounds like we plan to do a project. We make up, we come up with a number that we think is a reasonable construction cost for something that we haven't designed yet. Then we take 15% of that yeah. and make that the fee that we're willing to pay for somebody to design the thing that's in our head. And then. But there are industry standards, probably. But it's well, that there are, that. but these are below industry standards. It's, uh, Jim's numbers that he quoted earlier are, are correct. So, um, it, it, part of it is where the procedures formed on public buildings by the state procurement law. Mm -hmm. So when we do a pipeline project, we don't have to follow those procedures, and we can do something that makes more sense. Here, we're, we're kind of stuck, and then... I just want to remind you that we're being recorded. <laughs> I think that's all, that's all, I'm comfortable with all of that, I'm comfortable with all of that. Um, you know, and I, and I can imagine that there's a reluctance to 
um, set the percentage too high because it might feel like we're giving the money away that we don't need to. Mm -hmm. So it's like a negotiating ploy, but um, I think even if you set it high, uh, qualified firms will come in knowing that they're competing against each other and give you a real number. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think there's a big risk there, but um, and on this job, I don't, as I said earlier, I don't think there's a big risk. It's that initial step of lay people, or some people with some information, mm -hmm. some good sense, trying to sort of peg that initial estimated construction cost. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a complicated discussion. Mike and I have had, had some in discussions in the past about it. And as we start to do more work at the plant, it'll, you know, the, it'll, be a, it'll be more of an important discussion because we want to make sure we're getting quality firms that are helping us, us with this work. But if you look at percentage of construction on something like a school, the number could be as low as 10%. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this, we're in a way negotiating with Joe, Cook, the procurement officer, to figure out what the percentage is, and then we have to carry through and, and negotiate with the firm that we select. So it's, um, you know, it's a tough thing. And, and Joe, I mean, I think he felt that 15% was a little bit of a, you know, maybe that was even too high. So he's really, and, and, I, and I have no problem with his approach. I think we need to find this we need to find a happy medium. We all have the city's best interests in mind here in terms of doing things cost effectively. So I think it's good, but when you start larger, more complicated projects at the plant, they're going to be very challenging. We'll really need good engineers to help us with those jobs. Mm -hmm. This one here, you know, it's a little more straightforward. I'm not too worried about it. But the hours are lean. Have they worked for us before? Warden and Karen has. So we have experience. We do. They did a they did a project. They did the the Woodmont Road replacement force main for us last year, and um, they bid really lean on that one too. They their fee came in kind of well below some of the other firms. And you know when I looked at it, it's a little it was a little questionable that they would provide all the service that they have for the money that they had budgeted. But their work was very good, and they never came back for more money. I mean that's. And they're are they local? Um, this work would be done at Enfield, Connecticut. Oh, but it's not a local firm, it's a wider firm. How big is Warden Karen? I, I think they're out of Maine, right? Mm. So Northern, Northern, Northern yeah, Northern Southern New England wide, and I don't know. A yeah. couple hundred people. No, I thought maybe they were from Amherst. Or no. No, no idea. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think they're one based. Yeah. It sounds good. Yeah, and we check references on them, they're, they're clients on their clients love them for this type of work. We get some really positive references for the people proposed on the job. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Contract to Barbado, Barbado Construction Company in the amount of $11,462 for water treatment plant clarifiers. Number two and number three, check valve replacement, water impression. Move approval. Okay. So we have, this is a contract, construction contract with Barbado to replace two uh, check valves that are just upstream of the upward clarifiers to the water plant. Um, one of these valves failed about a year ago, and we have another one that just failed recently, so we want to get them replaced, um, obviously, as, as soon as we can. So we, we worked with Hayden Howard to come up with a design um, to replace them with a different type of valve. Um, and the, they were able to come up with a, with a check valve replacement, a different type of check valve that will fit in uh, the space that we have without needing to do a lot of repiping in the pipe gallery at the plant. So we're pretty happy with the, the design. We're happy with the bids. We received two bids on this job. Barbado was 11,463, and Delray Contracting was 24,666. Wow. Um, Barbado did some work for us at the plant, I forget, within the last year. They came out and mobilized and, and did, did some work for us, and they were very good. They were very efficient, and the quality of the work was good. We're happy with them, and they gave us a great price on this. So. All seems to be lining up all right. How many, if two valves have replaced, been replaced, how many total valves are there? Three. And, hmm. What about door number one? Yeah. <laughs> we had, before we 
before we bid this publicly, we had asked, we, we solicited quotes to replace the first one mm -hmm. because we thought that we would want to replace that as soon as possible mm -hmm. while we were bidding this. Mm -hmm. It turns out that we haven't actually replaced that first valve yet, but we have a we have an agreement with Barbado to do one and then they were a little bit on two and three, which actually works out well for us because we'd rather work with one company while they're all monkey, monkeying around in those valves. Right. So. so there's actually going to be three requests. There will be three, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's good. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Request for permission to occupy Pulaski Park on Friday, November, September the 12th as part of Arts Night Out for Chalk Drawing in the park sidewalks between 3 and 6 p.m. All fees are waived per mayor. So this is looking to big with their annual chalk festival. Chalk, chalk art festival we've approved it in the past. Um, everything's in order for signatures. Okay. I'll send you a copy of the letter, too. Yes, yeah, she got it. In. I got it. Um, Today. No, sir. <laughs> no, it was last night. <laughs> or yesterday, before last. Oh. This is the third year, I think, of the, at least the third year. You're right. The fourth, fourth year, then. It's, it's a good thing. Okay, all those in agreement for this? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Water main reserve for topics the chair did not reasonably anticipate would be discussed. Water main construction contract discussion. So a point of information for the board. Um, we have, op we opened up bids uh, on August 13th for water main replacement project on Pine Street, Florence Road, Riverbank Road, and Winslow Avenue. And it was my intention to have the contracts here for the board to sign tonight. And we've run into a little bit of a delay because we have some questions about the qualifications of the low bidder on this. So we're working with Tate and Howard, our uh, consulting engineer, um, and we're still waiting for their recommendation for award to either the, the low bidder or the second low bidder. If we choose if, if it's determined that the low bidder is not qualified and we're going to award to the second low bidder, we would want to confirm the details and, and get the advice of Joe Cook, the procurement officer, just to make sure that, um, you know, what our decisions here are appropriate and everyone's on board within the city, that that's, that's an acceptable thing to do. So I wanted to, to, to bring that to the board's attention that um, we have this contract, and the other reason I want to bring it to your attention is we're anxious to get the contract signed because we'd like to have the water main work done this fall, which means if I can clear up the issue with the uh, the award, I'd like to have people come in next week and sign the contracts, and, and B I'll have BJ let you know when those are available for signature. Um, so we couldn't have them available for tonight, but we'd like them signed next week. Thank you for giving us the heads up. I think that's helpful. And that's a little bit. Yeah, and, and a little bit of the reason why you know, because when we ask you to come in, you may notice that if we decide to award to the second low bidder, you may wonder why, and, and the main reason is we have questions about their qualifications on this type of project. What's the estimated dollar value of the contract both you signed in? The, uh, the low bid was $634,551, and the second low bid was $645,045. So about eleven thousand different, um, and that would come from what fund? It's a water enterprise fund project. And where is it? It's Pine Street, Florence Road, Riverbank Road, and Winslow Ave. Sorry, so, you told us. Yeah, it's now. okay. It's three different. It's three different locations. Mm -hmm. um, and the the work on Pine Street mm -hmm. and Florence sure. Road we're a little concerned about because it's one of the transmission mains. So large diameter pipe, lots of water. Um, we're hanging a new water line transmission main from the bridge. Right now the transmission main rests on the bed of the Mill River. Kind of a precarious place for a pipe. Um, and it's a high traffic area. And so sort of, it's kind of a complicated project. So you know, we, we want to make sure that the contractor has done all these sorts of things. Any other questions about that? No. no. Okay. Permits. 
So yesterday I sent out an email in regards to changing musician and performance permits. We had an issue downtown and um, Attorney Newman got involved on the Civil Liberties Union on uh, freedom of speech. So I was asked by the mayor and the city solicitor to revise our, our existing restrictions of our permits to delete the no amplification for the time being until the city solicitor comes up with constitutional language. So basically what it's doing is that there's a small section of restrictions and it says, use of any amplifying equipment, including but not limited to mechanical, electrical, or battery powered systems is prohibited. So that's why I was looking for your vote to delete. So until, the, until the city solicitor comes up with new language. Is everybody, did everybody read, have a chance to read through that? I, you no, know? I just got it today. <laughs> I didn't you just <laughs> Wait a minute, I didn't send that. <laughs> Maybe I just looked at it. I, and I think it actually came last week, or Monday at least. Oh. 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 I sent it out on the 19th, which was yesterday. So was there additional information that was distributed other than what Nate told us? No, that motion was... Oh, there was. Right? There was an extensive review of, uh, of legal uh, cases yes. by Alan Seawald. It was quite riveting, actually. Kind of interesting. No, I didn't read that part. You gotta scroll down. No. Scroll down on the email. No. Saeed versus the people of New York. One of the cases. Okay. So. So, so is this action being recommended by the city solicitor? Yes. So what, are we, what choice do we have? None. None. We None. But it's your, it's your policy. You <laughs> created the guidelines. Yeah. Right. And we can reword the motion if we want to, but I think the wording is fine, yeah. personally. Do we have any time frame on when we might get some recommended language? I don't. Could we ask, ask. for something? We've already had someone come in and ask for amplification. Amplification? No. What type of musical instrument was this person carrying? Baby grand piano. Guitar. Actually, he asked for it to play the piano. I don't well, we've know. had pianos down on Main Street. Yeah, but it, that turned into... We had a problem stand. with that. So we stopped it. Could we have the motion read right again? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to read it? Yeah. Um, I propose, and you can change it, to delete the restriction on the street musician and street performance permits that do not allow for amplification until the city solicitor provides new regulations that will meet constitutional standards. I make that motion. All right. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right. Thank you, Nan, for writing that up. No problem. Any other permit discussion? No. Water restriction? So, <laughs> last Wednesday, <laughs> <laughs> which you may recall, I was actually in New Orleans and I heard about it. I was on the damp side here. Uh, we tripped the uh, the trigger in our permit with DEP to call a water use restriction. What, at 8 in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> so we called the restriction. We did uh, notify the state. We did the reverse 911 here and other means of notification that we're obligated to do on our, on our permit. So we're in the uh, water restriction right now, and Ned and I were notified by Greg Nunham and the water super today that um, the stream level, the Mill River level, has um, has come up because it's been raining, and uh, for consec seven consecutive can days, days. So we could technically lift the restriction now, um, or we could just keep it in place until the end of the season, which would be the end of September. Now, uh, Ned did a little digging and found that it looks like September in, in 2010, 2012, and 2013, we ended the restriction at the end of the calendar requirement. And in 2011, it was September 7th when we called the restriction off. So the issue, the issues that we've talked about in the past regarding the restriction is that um, the restriction is tied to the Mill River and it's sort of precarious. So you could call a restriction 
and then call it off and then call it on and call it off and call it on. It makes it very hard for people to understand what is the important of the importance of the restriction if it goes on and off like a light switch all summer. So it's been my it's been my personal preference that once we call a restriction in the summertime that we keep it in full force until the end of September at which time the restriction is over by a permit. Um, but some of the board members in the past have identified that we sell water and if we have an unnecessary restriction we could be hampering some water sales by having an unnecessary restriction. So it's a bit of a balance there, right? Um, I think the communication is difficult enough on these water restrictions because obviously the day we call that we get four inches of rain. So if it, you know, it could be multiple times. I think when we first got this in our permit a few years ago, we looked back at all the historical rainfall data to see what would, you know, what, what would historically have happened. And I didn't look at that information before the meeting, but the general gist of it is that it could be two or three times a summer where you could call a restriction and then call it off and then call it on and call it off. So it's a hard communication issue, I think, with the residents to have something that's so variable. Um, it, it almost seems, you know, I don't know what the word is, but it's, it, it seems arbitrary, I suppose, to some that it be done that way. So anyway, the question before the board tonight is, we could, we could technically call the restriction off um, because the Mill River is up or we could keep the restriction in force through the end of the summer, which would be September 30th. Specific discussion? An interesting dilemma. I, I had one other comment while you're talking is that the credibility of having the water restriction on the day that we got four inches of rain. I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, if we recalled it, that would we would maybe regain some of that credibility, <laughs> but if there's no rain between now and the end of September and we have to do it again, then it call it reminds people what's happening. So it, your argument to just have it go until the end of September, because that's historically, it seems pretty legitimate. Right. Some communities in the state, they just do a water restriction. They just in the summer. In the summer. Mm -hmm. They just do it. Mm -hmm you know, June or whatever, to the end of September. That's it. It doesn't matter what the weather is. Um, and we, you know, and we could do that under our permit. We could just arbitrarily do it for the summer. And we, you know, we, the board voted to use the river gauge as, as the means that, uh, one of the options that the EP gave us to, to run by. So I think it's okay, um, but, you know, it's a little, it's hard for people to understand. So comfortable with leaving the restriction on. And I think we'd have more confusion for sure if we go back and forth. And I think at this point in the season, I, I question whether it impacts people's use of water very much anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not as hot, lawns don't need as much water. Right. Um, and our current program isn't as restrictive as it used to be. Mm -hmm as far as watering goes anyway. So I, I don't think we'd be losing much in sales. It's hard to tell, but mm -hmm. so I'm comfortable with um, Jim's recommendation. And the rest of you, Bill? Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead. Happy with it. Okay. Yeah. No, I think Mark's on the rest of the So I guess we're supportive of your thoughts. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> or should I should? That, that thought. That, that, that particular <laughs> thought. That particular thought. <laughs> Do we want a motion to uphold the current water restriction? a motion that we retain the water restriction in place until September 30th. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, Aye. was there a second? Thank you, David. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks for that. Reuse Center. Volunteers are having fun up there. They're actually, um, we have central services, I believe next Wednesday morning we'll be up there showing them how to frame walls. So, and help them with that. That's the next big task we're gonna be doing up there. Uh, they were actually working on uh, some drainage issues around the building this morning. And it's come along just fine for a volunteer group. They're, they're very um, energetic. I mentioned to Ned at our public hearing before we came, before we came here, that he's been very supportive in showing up and giving central services and helping I wonder if then my public appreciation about that. No problem. We're having trouble uh, 
with, with an adequate supply of carpenters or skilled, nearly <laughs> carpenters. <laughs> Welcome to the habitat model. <laughs> 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 and, and in fact, I was asked to ask you if you had any, as, as a former habitat, as a, a list of possible people with of such vocation and uh, interest. Inclination? Uh, yes, see me outside the main. Okay. But if they're women, I'm grabbing them for the East Hampton Woman Bill. Any other comments about the Bee Center? What what time is when Wednesday? The uh, I think it will be next Wednesday morning, in the eight morning. to eleven thirty. Right. I have a call to uh, Warren Jones at Central Services. We've been playing phone call today, mm -hmm. tag today. Mm -hmm. Also, Smith Oak, the students from Smith Oak help Habitat all the time. They were the Chad who was the teacher of the from Larry. Worked really well. And David and I will. I think you'll be at the meeting tomorrow morning with yes, the youth yes, soon, so. Right. Okay. Michael Parsons. Uh, it's likely I will not be at the next meeting on September 10th. Oh, okay. But I'd still like to see all the emails in there. <laughs> <laughs> and so you shall. I'll have extra ones for you. Then? I'm all set, thank you. I don't know if you've noticed, but look around this room and doesn't it feel so much more spacious? With the capital improvements that were done by removing the old air conditions and painting the walls brown, it seems like you could just stretch out and feel, behind you. feel the space. Oh, look behind true. your row and yeah, look around. Oh, remember that old thing that was so, there? Yeah. Maybe we can shake things up and turn the table around. Isn't that amazing? Someday we'll have windows. Some people have chairs that are comfortable and no. take the bunk out and go around sitting at his chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, so thanks for, and you've been able to move the oh, the enjoy it. cabinet. Yeah, that means, yeah. Um, Dancing room now. Mm, <laughs> You're in the lap of luxury yeah. in case you didn't know. <laughs> more tape. <laughs> You're probably yeah, next we'll have the reuse committee, a reuse center people come and repair our table for us. That would be nice. And I thought you were going to say take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Only if we can find something better. And there's more. <laughs> we're paving city streets. I saw oh, that. Yes. Have you seen this? Yeah, but I couldn't yes, find my way beautiful. home from Jackson Street yes. today yeah. because you put me through so many detours. Yes. And people well, are so happy. You will be happy in the end, MJ. I and those detours are gone and the streets are smooth. <laughs> yeah. But there was a nice editorial in the paper about how this is going to be good for the community and make everybody happy. It's great. I mean, it's a huge contract. Yeah. yeah. Engineering's working hard on, yeah. on getting all the work done. And yeah. Then, uh, so. um, I was going to make a comment about the um, the, the facade, the um, blinking warning lights as you get toward each project, but the blog has very clear what's happening every single week, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. So instead of paying attention to the August 4th to August 8th, this is what will be happening. Well, that's... Which is going to the blog. Yeah, it's a really good point, though, because the information on the blog is great, and Dave Oletta's been doing a great job mm -hmm. working with the contract to get mm -hmm. that information. But I have one of those signs in front of my house, mm -hmm. and every night I go in front of the sign, I, I pass the sign, go into my house, and I'm saying, you know, we could program those signs every week to say, this is the week we're paving, this is the mm -hmm. week we're milling, this mm -hmm. is the date that we're doing, and it doesn't take much to do that. I didn't think it would take no. much to I'll do that. I'll talk to David about that to see okay. for, the, for the extent of the job if we can do more frequent updates of because the Because it does boards. look pretty silly to say August 4th to August 8th, and then there's nobody there, first of all. It's August the 12th. The road is a mess. And right. Yeah. If people could anticipate. Yeah. Because we do the milling on some streets, and a week would go by while we worked on the, you know, we work on the catch basins and the manholes and things, the castings, and then, you know, the following week would be the paving. But the blog's been great. So. Yeah, it's been, it's been good. The contract has been good too. I mean, pretty efficient in getting work done. So Especially with all the rain. Yeah. Is there more? Can't top that. DJ? <coughs> I'm good. I was just going to thank you guys for finally paving Jackson Street. So, but you got to it before I did. 
I'm all set. Okay. Oh, oh question. I think we're going to have a new member soon. First approval last Thursday night. Right. We don't know. We're talking about whether he needs a second approval or he just wasn't notified about this meeting or we don't know. But I don't know either. I haven't yeah. seen anything come down from city council yet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Move to adjourn. So move. Thank you, everyone.